Hello and welcome to Isla, a two to four player board game by Ocean City Games that takes roughly about 45 to 60 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. In the game Isla, you are going to be an explorer traveling along the Isles of Isla, trying to go through the mountains and forests and plains, making a perfect trek as you gather flora, fauna, and artifacts. If you can manage, try to escape the Isles and bring back your artifacts to home. And if you can't, you might be stuck on the Isles altogether. This is a roll and write game in which you're playing um, up to four players competitively, trying to attempt to basically trek as much of the locations as you possibly can, scoring points along the way, gathering these cards here, and avoiding the threats as you travel through. The player who not only makes it to the end and scores the most points in that way, but also through the research cards and by gathering as many locations as possible, will likely be the winner of the game. We'll talk about the setup of how you play of the game, we'll talk about how you play the game, and then we'll have my review of the game, Isla. All right, are you ready? To set up the game, the first thing you'll do is determine the number of players playing the game. Each player is going to receive a character card, mainly only used in solo mode, but to identify who is who, and a pad from the paper, because this is a roll and write. Make sure everybody also has a pen or a pencil. Then give each player two of their player meeples of their color and place it in the bottom left corner section of your game mat. It's gonna be right next to the little boat space on the grid here. Additionally, you're going to get dice tiles. These are going to range in the green, blue, yellow, red, and purple, and you'll be placing them right underneath the die section of their color on the bottom left side of your mat. And one player is going to get the first player marker. Uh, lastly, but not least, you're going to get a number of tiles. Four flora, three fauna, uh, two of the artifacts, and then a sleep and a boulder tile. Shuffle those up and then make sure you, that you place them face down on this mat here uh, in the indicated spaces. They have little squares on them and that as long as they're randomized and set down here, you, you're fine. Uh, additionally, you have the four artifact uh, research cards out here. You shuffle the deck and just deal out four here, and then shuffle the threat deck and place it somewhere within reach of all players. After you've done that, you've set up the game board. You've got your board, all of your different tiles on it, your five dice, your meeples, and then your main two decks you'll be utilizing. If you're playing with less than four players, set aside any of the extra flora, fauna, and artifact tokens, as well as the extra player uh, cards, and have the dice somewhere within reach. Let's go ahead and talk about how to play. Playing Isla is quite simple. The game plays in rounds and each player takes part in phases until the end of the last phase, in which case the round will rinse and repeat up into the point where each player either gets lost on the island or escapes the island. The first phase of the game is the uh, planning phase. This phase is what's going to allow every single player in order from starting player to the last player to select one of three options. Option one is to rest, option two is to explore, and option three is to research. I'll explain these as the phases go through because it'll do so. The next thing after everybody has chosen one of those three options is the dice rolling. The player who has the first player marker will take all of these dice here. These dice are going to uh, be a range of different types of dice. You have the six sided, the eight, the 12, the four, and the 10 sided die. And you'll take these and you'll simply roll them. Once you have rolled these, this, these will be the community die pool. Um, if there is any ones, we'll enter the threat phase. The threat phase says that if there's at least one or more dice that have a one on them, you will take, um, the player next to you will take a threat card and read it to you and place it in front of you, the player who's the first player. And then you're going to have to do whatever that card says. It might tell you to exhaust something and then you'll have to discard it. It might be an objective that will give you bonus points at the end of the game, or it might be a negative unless you're able to complete something or something else happens later. These are all random and they could be good or bad. After the threat card has been divided out, if there was a one, and in this case there wasn't, so I wouldn't draw one, then you're going to move to the rest action. The rest can only happen once a game, so be careful on how you choose to use this action. But basically you'll be crossing off this middle ZZZ section on your pad here, and it will allow you to refresh the leftmost die spot on the bottom left of your game board, which I'll explain how that works in a second. After players have chosen to rest, crossing the thing off, and un-exhausting um, one of their die tokens, we'll go into the explore action. The explore action is the main action in the game. It's what's going to allow you to move around the game board. Each player is going to select, at the same time, any one of these dice. And when they select that die, they're going to take that die's number, in this case I selected the six-sided die and it is blue, and it has 
four on the top, and I will exhaust that. So I will exhaust the blue token, moving it up onto the square or the, the different symbol of that blue die. Now I'm going to use that number and move my meeple on the board, starting with the location on the bottom left hand corner. And then I can move up, down, left or right on the game mat. And as I do that, one, two, three, and four, I am then going to mark off each space that I have landed on. You may never move onto the same space more than once in the game. And because this is a roll and write, you'll be taking a pen or a pencil and marking off the locations, trekking and showing your journey along the Isle of Isla. There are a few rules to this. A, you have to start on the bottom left. B, up, down, left or right, no diagonals. And C, if you stumble across a boulder, you cannot move onto that location. It kind of blocks your path. Additionally, as you take uh, these tiles here, as you move onto them, move through or on, you'll take these little tiles. And these tiles are gonna be the flora, fauna, and artifacts. And they're going to allow you to turn them in for research cards later, which I will explain. Additionally, as you move across the die symbols on the board here, it will allow you to refresh, similar to the rest action, one of the die of that specific type that you moved across. However, if the die is already refreshed and you move through the space, you don't get to re-refresh it. It's just going to count as nothing. And after everybody who has chosen to explore has explored, you move on to the next action, which is the research action. The research action is pretty simple. You're going to be given a number of flora and fauna on the board here, and as you collect them, you're going to be able to utilize them by turning them in for these research cards. Uh, for instance, this guy here is two of the fauna and a flora, and it has a nine on it. You can turn in those three tokens to gain this card, which you can then place in front of you, and you can either A, keep this at the end of the game for its point value, or B, turn these in along with the explore action and the die to add that number plus this one. So I could turn this one in with that four that I just used and discard this for the nine, and I could move an additional nine spaces if I want. However, I'll lose the points for the end of the game. After people who have chosen to do the research have researched, a new one is going to come out for each player that took one, then we'll go to the round's end. Uh, in the round's end, you're going to refresh the research card pool. You'll discard one of these, you'll move these down, you'll take a new card out. The first player marker will move on to the next player. You'll take these dice and give them to the next player as well for when they do the rolling phase, and play will continue like that. Once again, going to the planning phase, where each player will choose one of the actions they wish to take, and and then dice rolling and threat cards are going to come out if you roll a one. You'll do the rest action for everybody who chose rest, the explore action for everybody who chose explore, and the research action for everyone who chose to research. And round refreshes again and you continue. The game ends, like I said before, when somebody or when everybody either A, escapes the island and gets on this little track here, or B, gets lost. If you escape the island, you move off this game board. As soon as you're off and you move the number of spaces for that turn, wherever you end up is gonna score you points on the track here. It can go from one to 10. If you block yourself off and cannot escape, that is considered being lost, in which case you'll end here. You'll still score points. You're just not going to be able to move off of this track or gain any benefits for the end of the game. Scoring points in the game is fairly simple as well. The first thing that happens is whoever reaches out first, whoever gets out of the island first, is going to score bonus five points. And then the second place will get three. Uh, research cards will be worth points. Like I said, if you keep these cards and don't utilize them, you'll score the number on, on them for their value. Uh, any threat cards that you have that are actually a benefit to you will score you victory points. Any unused dice will score you points. Each of these unused die tokens here has a number on them, and you'll add those up for each one that hasn't been moved up, and you accumulate those, and that'll be a total of points for you for those guys. Your escape track, the little track that you end up on at the very end of the game. And finally, unexplored spaces. For each unexplored space you have on your game board, you'll score negative one points, including the boulder space, which I guess doesn't really matter either way. You'll total up these points, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner of Isla. Yep, pretty simple, right? All right, let's talk about my review. So a few things to note as we get into my review of the game. A, remember that when you plan, during the planning phase, each player who is playing the game will have to select one of the three actions. So if you are in the rest phase and you did not choose to rest, you chose to research, you may not rest in the rest phase, you may not explore in the explore phase. And that's said for all players. However, if you and other players chose to rest or explore or research, most of those things are done at the same time, except for research. That is going to be done in player order because of the cards available to you on the board here. 
Otherwise, that's pretty much the main aspects of the game. Don't forget as you move across little spaces on the game board to refresh your die. If you ever run out of them, you're gonna be in deep duty. So make sure you're careful about that because if you ever have no dice to gather or to gain, you'll actually basically not be able to refresh anymore. And thusly, you will be out, you'll be lost at sea. Um, as well as making sure you gather the right types and save them and utilize them as best you can. There's a rarity for each of these guys. The flora is the least and then the fauna, then you have the artifacts and so how you choose to spend those for the cards will make a big difference. So let's go over the stuff that is, mm, I guess, the negatives or my, my bad stuff. Uh, the first thing is the threat cards. The threat cards are based on you rolling a one or multiple ones when you are playing. On your first turn, you take the die, you roll them. If you don't roll a one, you don't deal with the threat cards. However, if you do roll a one or two, it doesn't really matter how many you roll as long as you roll one, you'll take a threat card. These threat cards range. It could make you exhaust your six-sided die and discard the card. Or it could do something like give you three less movement whenever you choose to do your next uh, exploration phase. Uh, additionally, there's actually some good ones in here as well. Uh, there is stuff like you'll score an extra six points if you explore all the cliff spaces on the game board uh, or other different locations. There's a whole bunch of the different ones that will let you score different points. And there's also some that will be like, you get minus two victory points uh, unless another player escapes the island uh, after or before you. So there's a variety and they're all threats, but some of the threats are like good threats, I guess. I would actually prefer that if the threat deck has to be a threat deck, that it's just got negatives. And if you have want to add positives, you'll take them and place them on the player or character cards. So instead, the, the monkey Nebula, he wants to travel on the uh, desert spaces. Or maybe another character like this guy here, he wants to go on the mountains. And this can be another way for you to score victory points, as opposed to it just being random, whether you get something good or not. It kind of sucks, not only A, if you roll a one and you have to get a negative, but it also sucks if I roll a one a bunch of times and get a bunch of negatives, and then Callie rolls a one once and she gets a positive card. Eh, it's like, not only did I get all the negatives uh, from the threat deck, which is the bad deck, but she got a good one from the threat deck, and it just doesn't feel as good. It's okay if I feel like I roll a one, I got unlucky and I draw a threat card, but it feels even worse. It's like a feel bad moment when somebody else gets a good one. Another thing is I would actually prefer if there is more than one rest symbol on this area here. Uh, if there was maybe three instead so that new players will have an opportunity to refresh their die as they're playing the game. Maybe even make it a variant on gameplay where you can choose to add extra rests. There's no reason necessarily why I don't think you can have additional rests. It just makes it so that each player will have more of an opportunity to clear the game, but they're going to lose out, I guess, on actions to get themselves out of the island first. It's just a thought. It's kind of, I just, I, it wasn't even for me. I, I cleared the, the game pretty easily. It's not super hard to get out of here, but when you're a newer gamer, it might be a little more challenging to get off the island. And it's a feel bad moment when you can't get off the island. So making there a variable way in which you can make sure that all players at least have a good opportunity of escaping, why not take it, right? Okay, those are pretty much all my negatives. I wish the threat deck was taking all the good stuff out and put on the character cards, and uh, I wouldn't mind a few extra rests, especially when it's one of three actions and I can only do that one action once in a game. I really only actually have two actions for the most part. Uh, I love the research cards. These are, you're gonna be gathering floor and fauna. These are all hidden on the game board and they're a mixed bag as to where you're going to get them. You don't know where you're gonna get them, but they provide a ton of benefits. Pathing on this game is awesome as well. Selecting the die, and the die could be a range of different values, and moving across the game board, and each section changes the different types of die that you can refresh, and how you choose to move on the game board will make a big difference as well. You might end up blocking yourself off from certain points because you chose to move too fast to get to the exit. Or you might lock yourself up by trying to score too many points because now you can no longer get to the area at all. And so is rushing the good example a good way to do it or is uh, staying behind and trying to collect every little bit of good thing? It's kind of a mixed bag. It really just depends on you and how you choose to make the game work for you. The first player did not actually win the previous game I played not too long ago. And in fact, the second player who made it out actually ended up winning the game. Saving these cards here, while A, remember that each space on here is worth a point, discarding these guys can actually net you those negatives that you would have lost previously, especially if you're trying to exit. But if you're able to actually get across the game board utilizing the numbers as best you possibly can, then saving these guys is gonna score you a ton of points at the end of the game. These can be game winners for you.
The threats are cool. Actually, I really like a lot of the negative threats. I don't feel like they're too mean or too aggressive. I felt they're all pretty balanced and most of the time when somebody got one of them, they weren't like super feels bad. And like I said, the only feels bad that it came with those guys is when somebody got a positive and everybody else was getting negatives. Just didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Uh, the game board. This is a roll and write. It should be simple and easy to move around and to understand what each of the different locations are. And this does a great job of that. You're going to know where you're moving to and you can just draw a little line with a little arrow as you move from one space to the next space. And so it was never a big problem for people to realize when they had to refresh die or when to take one of these tiles or what spaces they haven't visited on the board. And you have the, all the opportunity to draw however you would like in this, in this game mode. Um, additionally to the end game scoring is very nice and simple. It's laid on the very bottom right hand side of the game board and there is a uh, player quick rules I'd actually prefer if there was a summary card somewhere just a little summary card maybe on, even on the back of your player entity so you can see what the different phases of play are because there's a lot of phases you've got the planning phase you have the dice rolling phase you get the threats phase the rest the <laughs> explore the research and then the end phase. So seven phases in each round. So I'd prefer if there was some little cheat sheet somewhere on each of the player's cards as opposed to just on the uh, page in the rule book. But overall, it's a fun little game. It's a great little roll and write. It basically kind of a mix exploration roll and write. And the way it works out is fun. It's unique. I haven't played a whole lot of games that involve moving around and not being able to move back and trying to kind of control the board and how I choose to gather different pieces and how I choose to utilize them for either point scoring or the ability to like maneuver around the game board. It's a nice quick teach as well. It's not super complicated. You just have to follow the steps in order and each of the steps are simplified. However, there is quite a few of them. Um, all the different pieces of art are really nice in the game. I'm not a huge fan of this like uh, abstract style of character art, but otherwise I love the little different types of tokens and their specific um, artwork pieces and the threat deck is really cool as well. And overall it's a lot of fun. This is a really fun little game. Uh, with some minor tweaks, and I'm assuming this is a prototype, so it will be changed. Well, I know it's a prototype, but it will be changed as you go forward. Um, and of course, this little extra meeple, I'm not sure if they just gave me a bonus one uh, or if it's used for something. I, I couldn't tell you. But anyway, I really enjoyed the game, Isla. It's a fun roll and write. It's something I would keep, especially if I had the full production uh, version of the game. And actually, each of the times I played the game, both groups of people who I played with said they wanted to play again. So we actually ended up playing more than once with each of the different game groups that we played with. So that just goes to show the testament of people enjoyed this game from the basic gamer to players who've been coming over every week for game night. Yes, Isla, solid game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Isla. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick it up. As well as if you think we've earned it, if you think we've put enough Zwara Viva into our videos, maybe you watch more than one of our videos, then go ahead and click the subscribe button and of course the bell notification button to see more of our videos here. As well as our live streams on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST and we do a whatnot stream usually on Wednesdays at the same time. All right guys, that's all I got for you this time and as always, I look forward to exploring the island of Isla with you next time.